Good morning and welcome to Marty's Tying Bench. Today we're putting together vice quad kits and it's terrestrial season so I've chosen a little bit more imitative ant pattern. It's called uh, Mr. Bill's Flying Ant. It's a pattern of Bill Black's uh, founder of Spirit River. I've called it a space ant for the longest time because he used a pretty wild crystal flash on some of them. It's a good pattern. It kind of disappears in the water and you don't see it, so we fish it as a dropper behind any old dry fly, and it's like free fish. Just every once in a while the fish will show up on it. We start off with a thin thread, A dot uni, or in this case 70 denier UTC, and I've got a strand of UV black crystal flash and I'm just going to tie that right in the middle of the flash fold the back one forward and get a couple of turns right up to the eye and before I tighten it up I'm going to tug those things out to the side so it leaves the hook eye clear and I'm going to trim these just so they're easier to work around. And you can exaggerate them, you can keep them pretty long, but uh, something a little more than the hook shank is a good. Now, for dubbing, there are a lot of different dubbings and a lot of different colors. Today I'm using Rabbit in black. I've got as many of the guard hairs as I can out of this. We'll see how fuzzy and spiky it gets. The hook can be any dry fly hook. I uh, always have a tray of odds and ends that just didn't make it back into the boxes and that's what I tie my ants on. It's good to have a variety of sizes anyway. Now you want to dub this tightly to the thread. not too thick and that makes it a little easier to shape it as round. And now I'm going to make about eight turns and that thread base there is going to be preserved. I don't want to tie anything on it. I'm saving that for when I tie in the wings and the legs. Now I'll go back to the dubbing and tie in the abdomen Gaster is the term used for this section on by the entomologist. The abdomen is what you'll see in recipes. Now this is going to be a bigger section. You want the difference in size between the head and the gaster to be distinct. And you want that separation between them to be distinct. So, you know, the head's taken up about a fourth of the hook shank. The middle section, the bare section, is about a fourth. And then this part is about the back half. Now, I don't care if these things are fuzzy and spiky, but if you like them to be neat, then just take a little extra time and, and apply your dubbing in several different lifts here yeah, that's about the same diameter and I want it to be bigger so more dubbing not much bigger but a little bit okay now for the wing I've got this uh, wing film, and there are a lot of different ones you can use. Swiss straw, medallion sheeting. This was a Spirit River product called uh, Winks and Things. And it's good. It doesn't fray. If you can find any of this stuff, you should latch onto it for just this purpose. Okay, now I'm going to set that up so that the wing extends about the same length as the, the size of that gaster. Now I'm just going to push that down with my thumb so it stays in place and come around very loosely. 
and then make some wraps back against the ball and that's going to keep my wing right up there on top. Trim that and while the film is in my fingers I'm going to go ahead and trim it for the next one. Now you want to kind of cut the edges off and make it roughly round or rounded and it'll never be perfect. If you trim until it it's perfect you'll run out of film and you'll be cutting on your thumb. So just uh, use the sharp part of your scissors and sometimes that's down around the less used part because the film is kind of slippery under the scissors. Okay I'm ready for legs. Now I've got two strands. I want to double up. You can tie, you know, one leg on each side, but I want to tie two legs on each side. Let's move that thread right up against the front ball. Lash that along my preserved area. So I got two in the front and two in the back. Two in the back, I'm going to trim about the same length as the wing. I'll take another two strands, or the rest of the two strands you just trimmed. Move your thread up in the front, and tie a couple in on the far side. Trim these legs also the same length, more or less, as the wing. And now I'm ready to whip finish, but I'm nowhere near the eye, so I'm just going to whip finish in the middle of the fly. And just be careful, you don't trap any legs. I'm going to reach up there and tug those things so that they're truly on the side. There you go. Now looking at this thing from the side, all of the legs and antenna are in the same plane so this will ride flush in the water. And that little clear glassy wings what sets this fly apart. Mr. Bill's Flying Ant.